Telemarketing and telesales in the Philippines is something that's a growing industry. Um, it's an industry I don't like. I'll be honest with you, I hate it. Um, we actually wrapped up a lot of the telesales, telemarketing, because I refused to do it. Because I prefer to do business that is productive. Telemarketing and telesales is a dying trade because people are getting used to it. And you know yourself, you probably block their telephone number. You hear the Indian accent, you cut it off. It's a dead, dead business. It's still making money, obviously, but it's something that is in decline. That's why more and more people are moving to stuff on the internet, and that's already taking a hammering as well. You know, like with Facebook trying to make it a business, uh, whereas crappy advertisement. That is another example of how they want to market to you. But I think people are becoming more savvy when it comes to crap advertising. I, like for example, I never buy anything off a link on the on the internet. Never have done. I don't know who does. But the failures in the Philippines I've seen in the call center industry is the first one is people pretending to be somebody else. Um, this is a big problem because mainly people out of Pakistan and India that do it. They pretend to be Americans. They pretend, you'll see their profiles. They got some white face, and then they say, "Oh, you know, I'm from Georgia or whatever." They're just liars. Um, the reason they're doing that is they pretend they've got a call center, lie to a, a business in the U.S., tell them that that all oh, they have a thousand people working for them or whatever, and then they sub it out to you. But at the same time, they're taking at least fifty percent out of the commission rate. What that leads to is a dying call center business. Not only your call center, but the very fact that they're taking so much money out of it means that there's no investment in training, there's no investment in equipment, there's no investment in the people. It's, it's just something that's abused to the max, and you'll see them all over free, uh, what's that? I forget, because I don't use them anymore. The, uh, you know, like guru.com and all that crap. I don't use any of them uh, because I found the quality so poor even to get something done that was very specific the guy that the guys that responded had no idea even what I was talking about now I know there's some good people out there but they I'm sure they're getting tired of it as well because not only have you got people driving down the price but the quality is so dire that you you can compete with it anyway because they're they're just hoping somebody pays them, uh, where you actually rely on them. But what I found in the Philippines, though, first thing is, a lot of the business owners have nothing to do with the business. They buy the call center, and so that's it, my job's done. Other crap, that's why it goes bust. Um, you Because they employ new business managers, which are normally a school schoolmate or somebody else, with no business experience, don't understand the industry, don't have a regular network of people, don't have the contracts there, and more importantly, they'll bring contracts which are destined to fail. They'll get contracts which are very high risk. They'll get contracts with no upfront fee. So you'll work for two weeks, and then suddenly you don't hear from the client because they've changed their Skype name because they've simply disappeared with your money. They've got paid off their client, but they were supposed to be the call center in the first place, not you. So stuff like that is very common but a new business manager is very likely to do that to generate business for the call center because they don't have the existing network of call center people in the US, in the UK and other locations because you need an existing network to outsource some of their work to you which only comes from actually knowing somebody in that network. The next side is the technology. You can take a server and the server in your call center, you would expect your IT guy to be able to build it from scratch. Not always. In fact, I found too regularly they didn't know how to build them. What they were doing is they were taking from this call center, cloning it, and putting it in your call center. They don't know how to set it up. Now, the problem with this is what happens when it goes down? Your call center is down for the entire night, it's down for a few days, it's down for a week, until they get another service sorted. If you know how to build it, it can be up in an hour. I can build it from scratch in an hour and a half. But 
this is the problem because you, somebody hired them for you I know this guy works at another call center but he's available blah 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 we'll hire him but that guy from the other call center is an IT guy but not at that level he doesn't really understand how to build that from scratch he, he is more of an assistant than your main IT guy now what you get with people that don't know what they're doing is the dialer runs too fast so your dialing number is not going to have people to, to answer it you got it set up so that you're not screening out um, phone numbers that are no longer connected you're not screening out answering machines you're not screening out phones that keep ringing you're basically just absorbing every connection and what the problem you have with a PBX system on, on a uh, voice over IP is you're paying for those minutes now how much difference does that make that can make the difference of up to three times your bill because your, your dial is not running properly and then you have the other way where you've got agents sat there and the phone's not ringing that is where somebody needs to adjust it for different hours of the day to make sure it's consistent, consistently busy. But you also have to get a balance there because you can eat up a lot of telephone numbers which would normally be answered at certain times of the day where you actually shouldn't be running your dial faster but reducing your numbers of staff because or moving your lunch breaks. And that only comes about by an owner of a call center taking the initiative. Because what I found is a lot of the time people want to do it but won't put the same sort of level of commitment somebody who owns a business will do. They will turn around and ah, it doesn't matter. You know, or, I don't know how to fix this. That's it. You know, I'll just hope it'll be alright tomorrow. New business managers will commit to contracts which are useless and cost the owner money. They'll hire, there'll be a lot of staff training and then find staff disappear within two weeks. What I found with my call center is people seem to stay consistently because we work very differently. Um, we're a bit, we're not, it's not that we're laid back, we treat people like human beings, not robots. That's why I really like working there. But these are the problems you have and what, you've, what I found in Cebu though is you'll get one call center, have a fixed salary, have a good set of staff and then the next call center will start up and they'll increase the amount to get the staff from the other call center at the same time they may not have even set up the contracts yet the problem with it you get with that is they go bust very quick because they were destined to fail from day one because the other call center which had been ticking over nicely didn't pay high salaries because it wasn't available now these are just a few things to think about if you think about setting up a call center in the Philippines. What I would say though is don't start with 50 people, don't start with 30 people, don't start with 10, start with 5. Because you need to sit there and learn the business yourself. If you're not willing to get on the phones and do it yourself, don't ask anybody else to do it because it doesn't work. And I know there's other people on YouTube here that will say, hey I've got a fantastic uh, call center, blah blah blah. I know who the guys are and I know they stole staff from other call centers. They, <laughs> a lot of the stuff that they're doing was never theirs in the first place. Um, a lot of these call centers were set up by Indian companies for example and a lot of Indians have got uh, a lot of money in the call centers in the Philippines. But you'll get people tell you they've got the best blah 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 usual sales pitch but a lot of it was never theirs in the first place they were from other call centers. Nothing wrong with that but at the same time they don't invest in the same level of training and it'll work, work short term, long term the more that gets watered down and the less, the less money there is to flow around the next country will probably be China that's doing it but there's a few tips if you're going to set up a call center be careful